even though the AFL Grand Final is literally only like a day or two away from when this video does get published, the AFL trade rumors, news, and speculation literally has not stopped for anyone at all. I mean, I've seen as many posts about like trade rumors as I have the Grand Final, which is just absolutely crazy to see and it just shows you how massive the 2024 AFL trade period is going to be. Again, I'll be going over all of those rumors and all the news that I've seen over the last couple of days with you guys right now. But before I do get all into that, again, there are still quite a big number of you guys who watch these videos that are not subscribed to the channel. Again, it would mean a massive amount to me if you guys could just take a couple seconds out of your day to leave a like, subscribe, turn on the notification bell, uh, even leaving a comment telling me how sexy I am, you know, all that type of stuff. It would mean a lot. Again, if I could, I'd try and give you guys a virtual kiss, but unfortunately that technology is just not out yet. Not that Mark Zuckerberg has, you know, tried to make it. I'm, I'm sure if he wanted to and he put his mind to it, we could be having some virtual kissing coming to the world in like two years or something. We'll probably see virtual kissing before GTA 6 is like what I'm trying to say right now. We've actually got a fair bit of poor Adelaide news to talk about to start off with. And I wanted to talk about the interesting one that came out, uh, which I actually talked about on the channel like literally a month ago. So I was pretty spot on about this, but it is being said that Ivan Soldo has officially requested a trade back to Victoria and is hoping to sign with St. Kilda. And that is being reported by Callum Toomey. Again, this is amazing for the St. Kilda Football Club. Not so good for Port Adelaide. And the reason I say this is because we know Port Adelaide gave up a decent amount to get him a second round pick and a fourth round pick, which has ended up being okay. And they gave that up to get him in thinking he would be their number one Ruckman, but with a ton of injuries and just issues this season, it just didn't end up happening. But he obviously didn't have much of an off-season with Port Adelaide, and I think if you were to give him an off-season and, you know, hopefully let him stay injury-free, he could very well take over being, you know, Port Adelaide's number one Ruckman next season. And I think a healthy Ivan Soldo could very well be better than Jordan Sweet. And even if he's not, Again, Ruckman do get injured and having Ivan Soldo as your backup Ruckman in case Jordan Sweet were to go down is an absolutely insane thing that you can have on your team. But unfortunately, he wants to go to St. Kilda and I think the St. Kilda Football Club will offer up a deal that Port Adelaide will just be like, yep, let's make this happen. And then if you're wondering, why would St. Kilda do this? Do they not own, already have, you know, Rowan Marshall? Is he not one of the best Ruckman in the comp? Why would they go out and bring in Ivan Soldo? Again, one of the biggest positives about Ivan Soldo does actually happen to be his ability to play in a side with another Ruckman. We saw him actually win a premiership in 2019 with Toby Nankervis, who was struggling a lot through injuries that year. And again, played throughout with the Tigers with, of course, those Ruckman that can go forward like Marbia Chol and all of that type of stuff. And now we know Chol has really invented himself as a full forward at Hawthorne. The thing is though, with Port Adelaide, Jordan Sweet really didn't have the ability to go forward. So he and Soldo just didn't really work that great. But if we're looking at St. Kilda and how that's going to go, we know when Rowan Marshall goes down full forward, he's actually really, really good at what he does up there. And there's been AFL experts for a long time who've actually questioned if Rowan Marshall is a better forward than he is Ruckman. And that's saying something considering this guy is a top five Ruckman in the AFL. He has the ability to be, I think, a two goal per game type of key forward who goes and plays in the Ruck for like 30 to 40%. I think that's what St. Kilda are really looking at here. Again, it's been proven for a couple years now Max King does need some help. He does need a second key forward option down there. They've rotated a bunch of different guys through and nothing has really stuck for them so far. They've even tried to play Tom Campbell and Rowan Marshall at the same time, but obviously Tom Campbell, I just don't know if that guy was AFL caliber of, of, of a level, if you know what I mean. But if you bring in Ivan Soldo and you say to him, look, we want you to play... 70% of your game as the Ruckman, 
30% as a forward. And then you do the same thing. You go to Royal Marshall and say, look, we now want you to play as like 70% up forward, 30% as a ruck. I think that would actually be a really good dynamic. And I wouldn't be surprised if Rowan Marshall goes from one of the best ruckmen in the, in the game to a key forward who will average you like 15 hitouts per game as the second ruckman, but could also kick you to a game as well. I really like this. I think this experiment could go well by St. Kilda and there's no reason they shouldn't do it. And I think that's why they're really interested in Ivan Soldo. Dan Houston has also finally requested a trade to a Victorian club. We've been knowing this for a minute that he's been wanting to go back to Victoria. The reported clubs that are interested in him do happen to be the Western Bulldogs, Collingwood Football Club, and Carlton. I also think North Melbourne are an outside chance as well. And again, it was said St. Kilda, but they have apparently dropped out of the race. So I don't think they're going to be going for Dan Schuston anymore. Again, Jack Lacocious actually decided to pick Port Adelaide over Adelaide with a bank said that he wants to join Port Adelaide in the upcoming trade period, according to Tom Morris and Callum Toomey. He has two years remaining on his deal with the Suns, which is being said to be worth over a million a season. Now, again, this is good for Port Adelaide if you look at it in one way, bad for Port Adelaide if you look at it in another way. Unfortunately, I think the reason Port Adelaide really want Jack Lacocious is they want to play him as a key forward. And I just think that is a terrible idea. Anyone who has watched Jack Lacocious play for Gold Coast over the last couple of years as a key forward knows that he can be an extremely weak forward who is unwilling to take a contested mark and just do, does not look good up to, to the point where when he was playing there and he had a bad game or two, Damien Hardwick dropped him to the VFL. When Jack Lacocious plays his best footy, I think he's a halfback who has some intercepting about his game. He's also a very good player when it does come to doing the kickouts. I mean, he's one of, I think, the better at it. His foot skills down there are elite. And I just think in the AFL, he is a backman. Thing is, without Port Adelaide looking at it, though, is... From what we've heard is they want to play him as a key forward, which I just don't think is the right decision. And it looks like they're going to be moving Burgoyne down to being a halfback to replace Dan Schuston, which I love. I mean, Dan Schuston is one of the best halfbacks in the game. And you replace him with Jason Burgoyne, who was a good wing that it looked to be one of the best halfbacks in that final series when he got pushed down there. So that makes sense. But Lacocious, yeah, he's not a full forward. Uh, he, I don't know if he will change and become a full forward at Port Adelaide, but to me, he's weak. He doesn't go for a marking contest. He gets outbeaten extremely easy, even as like the second or third option that he was at Gold Coast. He's going to be like a distinctive second option at Port Adelaide, and it's, uh, I just don't like it. I don't agree with it, and I think if they bring him in, they should be looking to play him as a backman. Again, for the longest time, we also knew that Port Adelaide were extremely interested in Harry Perryman, but from a new report, actually says that Collingwood is making a huge push for in-demand giant Harry Perryman. It's also stood that he was a massive Collingwood supporter growing up, and that there are beliefs at Collingwood that he could actually become a good option to be able to help Nick Dacos in that midfield. Now, the reality is Perryman is from Sydney and he would absolutely love to re-sign with the Giants. The issue is he actually wants to play midfield and they just don't have the money to be able to keep him. Where Port Adelaide is sitting from the reports we've heard is that they actually want to play him as a wing and they are offering the most money out of all teams. But Collingwood are coming out here now and are saying, we don't want you as a wing. We want you as an inside midfielder. We won't be able to offer you as much money, but you have to come to the club that you supported as a kid. I think this is a very big chance that Harry Perriman does join Collingwood. Thing is, Port Adelaide are offering six years with a trigger for a seventh year. I think if Collingwood were to go and offer the exact same deal, maybe on less money, I think that could actually get done. Again... I do have some worries for this as, you know, someone who doesn't necessarily know if Perryman is an inside midfielder. I think if you're going to change him from being a backman, maybe pushing him to the wing is a good thing. We've seen him play some wing, I think, in his time in the league. But as an inside midfielder, I haven't seen a whole lot of that 
and I'm not exactly too sure how it's going to go. My only fear for Collingwood is it kind of reminds me of the Nick Floston situation in 2017, where the Tigers, again, they originally drafted him as a midfielder. He played halfback for the Tigers. Then in 2017, they played him as a midfielder. He started off pretty average there. And then over time, they just decided to move him down back again. My worry is for Collingwood, they offered this guy all this money in all these years. They bring him in as an inside midfielder. He plays average there. And then they're just like, oh, well, we got to push him down back now. Again, that's still not a bad thing. He would be a great backman for them as well. But yeah, they do desperately need another midfielder. Is Harry Perryman their guy? I don't know. We'll have to see. It's only time will tell if Harry Perryman will actually be the guy for this Collingwood team. So I'm really interested to see how that all does, of course, go. If he does sign there, if he doesn't, I don't really know. It's also being said that Isaac Cumming has nailed his decision on leaving the Giants. He has basically requested a trade. It is being said that GWS free agent Isaac Cumming is set to play at a South Australian club in 2025. With a connection to Adelaide star forward Taylor Walker placing the Crows in the box seat. Again, from what I know, both Port Adelaide and Adelaide have offered him four-year deals. He's actually a really underrated player for the GWS Giants. And I feel like if Adelaide can sign him, they're having a sneakily good like off-season right now. They're going to be keeping, I think, a lot of their picks or the majority of them. And they're going to be bringing in Neil Bullen and Isaac Cumming, who are very good role players who are just going to come in and add to this team really nicely. Again, they do have to nail these picks, which they've been known to unfortunately struggle with, especially in the last couple of years. But if they can do that, bring in these two guys for cheap. I mean, I don't see why Adelaide couldn't maybe jump back into getting higher than whatever they finished this year, which I think was 15th. So there's definitely a lot of room for them to improve, but I think they might have the capability to be able to do it. But of course, if you haven't already, please make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Comment all of your thoughts and opinions on this all down below. Who do you guys think all of these free agents are going to go to? And do you guys think these deals are going to get done pretty smoothly? I'd very much like to know. Subscribe to my gaming channel and my IRL slash vlog channels as well. Links for them will be in the description down below. And I guess I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.